Good Friday morning. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk, an insider's guide to real estate, life, and the pursuit of happiness on the I Love Seville Network. We're live in Charlottesville, the commonwealth, the country, and the world, powered by the Yes Team Realtors. Today, today's program, a really, really good one. Christopher Bremet's going to join us. We tried on Tuesday to feature him on the program, but because of us and me with some te technical difficulties, we weren't able to do it. Today, we're going to give him an opportunity to shine, not only from a real estate standpoint, but from an economy standpoint, just from a strategy standpoint of how we're navigating COVID-19. It's all about survival and positivity on this program. Judah Wickhauer is the director. Let's go to the studio camera and let's welcome the distinguished gentleman to the show. He's lined up a phenomenal program. Yet again, Keith. Yeah, th thank you. And, and uh, we were supposed to have uh, Sally Hudson on on the second half of the show, but talk about technical difficulties. Uh, believe it or not, she lost internet at our house this morning, so I got that phone call from her people early in the morning. So we've pivoted uh, over to uh, bringing her in on Tuesday along with the CEO of co Construct. It's a big-time show. Thank you. Well, this is going to be a big-time show. What, what Christopher doesn't know, his time just got longer. Yeah, <laughs> and we're excited, Christopher. Uh, I've got some orange and blue in his blood. We'll talk economy. We'll talk Charlottesville and Central Virginia. This portion of the program, thanks to Roy Wheeler Realty Company. Yeah. So yeah, as always, uh, you know, Roy Wheel is a, a great sponsor, great place to hang our license. Michael's a, a mentor to us, and uh, you know, they they just uh, they just do so much. We just can't list uh, can't list them here. And you know, we're going to get into some nuts and bolts here, but along the bottom of the feed, you know, please support our sponsors the best way you can. Amen. Keep it local. Before we welcome Christopher Bremen for Burbanti Homes to the program, what's on the brain, Keith Smith? On the brain, huh? Yeah, on the brain is, is um, I have this new affinity for live t t t t webcast. It ain't easy, we, right? Man, I'll tell you what, God, my hat's off to you, man. You know, we're, we're only doing this twice a week for one hour, and, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm a Marine, so I'm, I'm used to pivoting pretty good. And, you know, in the construction business, you learn how to pivot. In the real estate business, you learn how to pivot. But when you're uh, 10 minutes from walking in the door to going live, find out that your second guest can't uh, make it. You know, you pivot. You pivot. Christopher, coming to you soon here. Um, you did some statistical research to prepare for the back end of the show with I a did. good conversation um, talking point for us. Let's tease it before we welcome Christopher to the yeah. program. You know, so uh, I'm a numbers guy, and, and I like to play around in the, in the uh, Paragon, which is our MLS system. And, you know, I just took a snapshot and trying to figure out what the last two weeks looked like and sold. So that's meaning houses that have actually closed and money has changed hands, deeds have changed hands. And what that looked like in a 25 mile radius on contracts only written from when the governor issued the stay at home order 55. And I believe that was March 24th. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. It was some pretty interesting statistics and Maybe Christopher might have share some thoughts on that before we get there. We'll ask Christopher about confidence. Um, he was talking about this yeah. earlier in the week and the yeah. value and importance of confidence in today's economy, a time where we see roughly 15% of Americans um, unemployed, yet the stock market performing at strong levels. The NASDAQ yesterday went green for the year 2020. So the NASDAQ positive for the year, yet 33 million Americans out of work. Judah, I'm going to go to the phones, and I'm going to Skype Christopher into the program. We'll certainly welcome him and ask him that question. As it's ringing, why did you welcome Christopher to the program? Yeah, well, first of all, he's a dear friend, um, and uh, actually is pretty articulate in, in kind of explaining this stuff. Um, but I really wanted to hear from him as wh what is the new construction looking like in this COVID-19. And then also he wears the hat as the immediate past president of the Blue Ridge Home Builders Association. And, you know, what is his members, right? Because he's, he's in the leadership team. He's talking to them all the time locally. What are they seeing? What, what is their crystal balls going? And, and Christopher also has some pretty national uh, uh, reach uh, on it. So yeah, that's you know. He comes with high praise. He's on the phone now. Yeah. Judah, we're going to him. Christopher, thank you for being patient with us and joining us on Friday. The show is yours. Um, COVID-19, it's a crazy world out there. I'm going to get out of your way. What are you seeing on your end? What's the temperature you're seeing on the street on your side? Well, um, thanks for having me. And first of all, um, Keith, thanks for the introduction. Um, you know, I was watching the show before you pulled me onto it. And 
I heard Keith saying some nice words. I wasn't sure who he was talking about at first there, but um, happy to contribute. You, you can send me the hundred dollars later, okay? <laughs> Preferably cash. Um, you know, I would say that uh, you know, just broad picture, starting off, that you know, obviously things aren't perfect. Um, a lot of people are dealing with curveballs, unexpected things, but um, they're still planning. Um, they're still planning their new their next build. Um, you know, if, 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 if I try to be the voice of new construction, um, there's a lot of different ways that, that new construction happens, whether that's uh, buying a complete new home, um, deciding to build a custom home, um, or deciding to renovate your home. And, um, and, and one thing that we're doing more, and I know you guys are doing it too, we're doing it on TV shows, is, is just talking with our peers more, talking with our clients more. I talk to my clients, I ask my clients to help me understand where they are, how has this affected their lifestyle, are they still planning their homes, or do they need to hit the pause button? Um, but business is still being done. Builders have houses under construction, and that's what's keeping them afloat. Um, I think the, the, the unique challenges that people will see is that they're, there's, there's becoming a gap in their backlog. And so that, that, that pain may be seen on the horizon. It might be in a month, it might be in six months, um, but smart builders are thinking about um, how, how can they keep their pipe full and their business model full and their teams busy in, in maybe a way that they weren't doing so before. The realtor Ray Cadell just shared the show. Thank you, welcome Logan Foster to the program. Real Estate Three and Roy Wheeler, thank you for joining us. The good news, Christopher, my wife is watching the program. She was excited to hear you. She says the sound is absolutely fantastic and you're dropping knowledge dimes here. You were highlighting confidence and the value of confidence in this market on Tuesday's show. Before I pass you to Keith, give us some insight into what you meant by that. Well, we've learned um, that this pandemic, Keith, affects um, everyone in a different way. I mean, there's so many metrics and ways that we can be affected by this pandemic and everyone is affected differently. And so I see that people's confidence is a result of how this has affected them. And uh, we'll get past it one step at a time, one check mark at a time. You know, we're not affected in one way by COVID. It, it's a dozen. And and as people check off their concerns and life gets back to normal enough so that they can continue their plans, then they'll make the decision. What we're seeing is that people aren't stopping planning, designing houses, writing specifications, getting getting pricing. Um, but but where where you might see a little bit of hesitation is when it's time to put a shovel in the ground and, and, and really commit to um, that investment. Great to see you, Christopher. Um, we've spoke on the phone a bunch of times in the last, God, six or eight weeks, right? Uh, I did not notice the beard, man. Look he at looks the, good. Well, He's got I, the playoff beard. I was going to say something about gray, but I won't. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, pun I'll punch him for you, Christopher. <laughs> Says the guy who's got gray, right? So, so um, you know, start off, family good. Oh, yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, you know, my girls are 14 and 11 and man, they have been great. Um, I texted uh, pictures and videos to the grandparents of all the different craft projects. There's little to no space on, on the tabletops in our house. Well, as a, as a father of two daughters, you know, I, I get it. You, you, you know, you will get much more gray, trust me, a little later, in, little later in life. But, you know, it's funny, you were saying something about it, and one, Jerry was asking me what, you know, introduce yourself, and one of the reasons I, I was uh, really excited about bringing you back on is you're just a really good communicator. Yeah. Um, but you said something, which is something Yona and I are doing, and we talked about this on the show a couple of times. This thing actually is a phone. And I know how much you prefer not to talk on the phone, but you are an email guy. Uh, but the, the fact that you're reaching out and communicating with your clients is, is, a, big, is a big thing. So w we're seeing on our end of it, let's say the retail end of it or the resale end of it, not the new construction side of it, stuff similar to, to what you're seeing. Folks are kind of not putting their houses on the market. They're working on on getting them ready, right? So forth and so on. So I think you're having some contracts that are written, trying to get folks to, you know, folks are ready to pull the trigger. Uh, you know, as a recovering builder, one of my concerns, but particularly, and I, maybe it's unfounded, but, you know, I'm, I'm seeing all of a sudden at some magic point, everybody's going to say go, I right? So. And how are you going to manage that? 
Yeah, that's um, that's some of my talking points or my list of notes here, and um, it'll be a challenge if everyone says go at once. And you know, it never quite happens perfectly like that. I, you know, Bramante Homes Boutique Custom Builder. We build twelve homes a year. Um, one a month is our goal. Um, you know, the last time we started one a month for twelve consecutive months. When? Never. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Just Can I ask you a like question? So, What's the most you've done in a year? Um, twelve, maybe thirteen. That's legit. Pretty, pretty consistent. We, I don't want to make the show about us, but we we want to we want to provide a consistent level of service to our clients, um, and and committing ourselves to more projects um, is at odds with that goal. So, job site safety, right? COVID nineteen. We as real estate agents on the on the resale side of it, right? We've developed some really super great protocols to do it, and they're working. We've had closings this week. We've had home inspections this week. There are set up protocols: masks, gloves, <clears throat> you know, disinfection, disinfectant. Excuse me, in and out. T tell me how this is working on a job site. I'm glad you asked that question, um, and and I, I might try to kind of pull this all together with where we started, where we tried to start on Tuesday. And, and that is with the, the value and the benefit of trade associations. Um, uh, Bermonte Homes, most local builders and remodelers are members of the Blue Ridge Home Builders Association. That membership also gets you a membership in the state organization, the Home Builders Association of Virginia, as well as the National Association of Home Builders. And um, everyone's been working really close. And if you guys will give me some time later in the show, I'd love to talk about what BRHBA is doing, what our president, Jody Mills, is doing, because she's doing a great it's on job. on the list, brother. Um, <laughs> love it. Um, but yeah, specifically, we've been working um, lo locally, state, and national level uh, to implement a um, OSHA certified safety plan. Um, we uh, just a couple weeks ago uh, also participated in a national stand down where for 10 minutes, all job sites were at least 10 minutes were inactive. And we did an educational session with all our trade partners to make sure they understood the safety plan. So we, we push it out, mandatory compliance on all of our job sites. We're wiping down surfaces at least once a day. Uh, we're, we're minimizing the amount of people in the house. We're staying six feet apart. Um, that's, that's how we're being safe um, and trying to stay productive. Because after all, uh, we're grateful that we can still work. And, and through the different stages of the pandemic, we've, we've learned that we can't be reckless. Because if we are, get shut down. the governor has no choice but to stop our business. And what's that going to do to the economy? So we've, we've transitioned from feeling lucky or privileged to almost a sense of duty to uh, keep things going and do it safely. So along those lines, um, I have a client. We're building a house with you, right? So now you mentioned trade partners and contractors and workers on the field. How do, how do we do this, this um, new social distancing in something similar like a pre-drywall walkthrough. And I don't want to get too much into yeah, the weeds no, on the right, construction right. stuff, but right, you know, you, you're going to walk a client through that, right? How are we, are you handling that maybe similar to the same way we're handling everybody's masked, gloved up, right? Or, or have we even done one of them during this pandemic? Well, we are. We're, there, there are some meetings that just can't be replaced. Um, and so when we're having them or being as, Sure. careful as we can but we're also supplementing that right with more detailed plans when you know in a commercial contract you you've got an electrical diagram for the entire house and it's bulletproof um on a residential from a residential perspective you know a, a client's wants and preferences dictate where switches go where specialty lighting goes and those are things that we would typically do in a walkthrough now we're uh, just getting a little more detailed on the plan um, so as to prevent um, that risk. So I'm going to pass you to Jerry. He's been getting a bunch of stuff on the feed, and I'll let him ask you a couple of questions. I got some questions for you personally, and then I'll go to the feed here from the agents. Um, you know, I talk about this a lot on the show. I'm a small business owner. You're a small business owner. We have uh, people that we love that count on us making some good decisions. I'm just curious of you as a CEO how much macro storyline impacts your decision making? Here's the question I have for you. 15% roughly Americans out of work, 33 million Americans unemployed, um, yet the stock market's crushing. 
the NASDAQ is in the green for 2020. It's nuts out there. It's just this like wealth gap or this, this, this crossroads. Does that change how you look at a year or your mindset of how you go about running your business? Oh, we're thinking about it. And, and we're, we're trying to find, we're, we're figuring out it's as like, we go. It's like, what's the sweet um, spot now? Yeah, exactly. Um, I work with some coaches, uh, Paul and Ed, if you're watching. Um, Ed, uh, and I haven't read the book yet, but he shared with me recently uh, a story about a couple of mice uh, and the book's called Where's I've read cheese? that book. It's amazing. I read it in like 90 minutes. It is amazing. Yeah. One mouse is saying, where's my cheese? I can't find my cheese. Trying really hard to find their cheese. And the other mouse is figuring out what the next plan is. Right. Right. That is, dude, I, he's dropping dimes. That is a great book. Can you. we find that book, Judah, and put it in the, in the feed? Everyone should read that book. It'll take you 90 minutes to read this book. So, I mean, wh where do you look? I mean, how do you think it's going to play out? Is, is it going to impact... First time buy, I mean, is it the, the trade-up home that's going to be hot now? Is it going to be home two, home three? I mean, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, I, I don't think my crystal ball is that well polished. Uh, we're, we're, we're reacting to the information that we have. And it's, you know, as we know, weeks ago it was changing by the hour. Uh, then it was changing by the day. Now it's kind of changing by the week. I'm excited to hear what our governor has to tell. Um, but, I, you know, I, my remodeling uh, uh, peers are booming. I got an email yesterday that said, I need a new project manager. I need carpenters. Um, new construction, you've got the production builders are thinking about building spec homes so that when people's confidence returns, there are more complete homes that they can choose to build. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, that I have an answer to the price point or product type that's going to be hot. Caleb Mancini is watching the program. Hey, um, so I was having this conversation with a common friend of ours and John Kerber of uh, Dominion Custom Homes. And the conversation we, had, we were having was new construction, um, I think, is in position to be in a really good spot um, because people may have the mindset, I want something that's brand new that I can control from the start, the setting or the health or the environment of the home. The remodeling space with everybody sitting on their couch, seeing the damage around their home that needs to be done and not preoccupied by going to work. Remodeling's gotta be booming, right? It is, it is. Um, you know, I, I mentioned my remodeling buddy that's hiring. To, I, I introduced him to a neighbor who emailed me earlier in the week because they were thinking about a move. I don't know if the pandemic was why they've chosen not to move, but now they're ready to finish their basement. You know, they needed a different amount of utility in their home than their home currently provided. And instead of going to buy a new one, uh, they decided to add it in their we basement. We got this question coming from a realtor, then pass sure. it to you. Um, Jerry, can you ask the guest if he sees the type of new construction changing? Mm -hmm. Will people want um, more multifamily or more single family because of COVID? Good question. Just read my question yeah. I wrote down. I think that is a good question. Um, I, I think people will think about, do you want to, I'm sorry, Keith, did you No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Go, please. Yeah, I, I think that people are, are doing some soul searching. They're thinking about the way they live in their home and if they're going to live in their home differently. We've all been working from home a lot more lately. Um, I know that uh, I, I'm lucky to have a basement that I'm from. Um, but I, I think, but my wife also lives from home. I do work at home. So maybe we're, we're thinking about repurposing the way that we use our home. It's obviously not a permanent thing it's a temporary thing who knows happen again um and then also and i'm going to quote our um our, our current president blue ridge home builders association president jody mills um she uh she helped me prepare for the meeting sharing her perspective and this is one thing that she had to share she said COVID has really had folks examine where and how they live and it's causing folks to consider a move when maybe they weren't before um they need maybe they need to be closer to walking trails etc and that's suddenly more important and i think that that could be a really good thing for our market because as you know we are a little bit more rural so uh we're, your your internet's a little bit slow down you had you got a little fuzzy there for a second but but that's okay it looks like it's catch it's good like, it's good looks like it's catching up so uh, i do want to go back a little bit because this is a really interesting um comment you made you work with coaches right which is super super cool so what I mean, this is a national firm, right, that you're working with. What, what does your coach feed, give any feedback they're giving on other regions other than nice job on the Blue Ridge Home Builders Association Cup? Well, well done. <laughs> um, what, what kind of feedback are they giving more regionally or, you know, outside of our little sphere of influence here? Well, um, I th you got to think to 
think about who they're working with and and they're working with with progressive builders that you know see their company as 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 a machine and and want to improve it so so their clientele um is sophisticated and i, and I don't mean to say that others aren't but um everyone that they work for are they're reporting to me as gangbusters right now sure. they got a, they got a well-oiled machine they're 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 being smart about their marketing efforts they're pivoting as they need to their pipe is full and they're as busy as they can be so um your your personal business you're on the custom side right and and i'm going to pivot to pivot a little bit to their hat as the past media past president but i've having some conversations with some of the lo uh, local national guys right uh, the, the production builders, as you refer to them, and, and they are doing just that. They are putting specs in the ground as fast as they can do them. Stanley Martin's got a spec going up. Yeah, um, and I have a client that, that I represent that uh, is another national builder uh, for a large subdivision. I had a conversation. I said, you guys still in? I said, man, we're in. Yeah. You know, we're in. We're ready to go. Now, this project won't be ready until 2021, right? You know, so they can put product in the ground, but you know, the, the, usually when those guys start walking things back, that's kind of saying new construction potentially is in a bit of a slowdown, and they're they're, they're full wide open. So to tie it back to your hat as the media past president, what are your members locally telling you, right? You have conversations regularly with them. How are they doing? Yeah. Are, are they uh, have... A, a backlog and a pipeline re ready to pull the trigger or are they putting more specs in the ground any information that you can share would be great well you know my report is not comprehensive yeah. but I, I but those folks that i am talking to um have work they're pivoting uh where they see fit um they're they're busy um they're planning they're working on that next start i think there will be a gap for everyone and I don't know that everyone really wants to disclose sure, that. Of course. Um, yeah. But um, you know, we've already talked about remodeling. I was talking to um, kind of a more medium-sized builder, certainly a much build bigger builder than me. Um, they're dealing with some um, entitlement issues, um, getting projects yeah. through the localities. Um, I think that will persist. I don't know if that's as high a priority as issuing building permits and certificates of occupancy. So, you know, it's, it's funny how... Um, you know, and, and that, that process is so early that you won't really, we may not even realize how it affects the market sure. because it's so early in their process. So um, just to wrap a little thing around the renovation thing, the Smiths. Just, you guys are doing it. We just finished it yeah. up and uh, needed, needed some shoe molding, right? Just a couple of sticks of shoe molding. I ran up to Lowe's Sunday morning. It was booming, right? Zion's Crossroads. I couldn't find a place to park. Yeah. I immediately called my stockbroker and said, buy low stock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll find out here in a little bit. But, you know, the, you know so it's just the, the industry kind of, kind of pivoted, pivoted a little bit about it. Um, Here's a good question that's come in. Mm -hmm. um, Christopher, from a realtor in town, what kind of new trends are you seeing with new construction inside a home? And I want to add something to that. Are we going to see an emphasis potentially on Zoom rooms or video rooms or more of an emphasis on a work from home situation to help from people as they move forward? Well, if you if you don't have a Zoom Pro account um, or Skype. Oh, well, you saved um, it, Christopher. You saved it. <laughs> <laughs> um you, you need to go get one um, because, and, and, I, and I admit that while I have one, I haven't had it that long, but we are, it's, we're doing business differently. Um, to answer the realtor's question, uh, wow, flooring, there are some really cool luxury vinyl tile, luxury vinyl plank, reclaimed, anything is really hot right now. Um, just in, in ceramic and porcelain tile themselves, so much really cool stuff to choose from in the market right now. People are having fun with it. Um, the, the, the modern farmhouse has been hot for a while. Um, some people are telling us that that's peaked. Maybe we're looking for our next architectural style. I might need to go ahead and sell my home because I got on the bandwagon. I got my white house with its black window. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny about the trends thing. Um, so we did our bonus room in LVT, right? Luxury vinyl tile. And you know what? It was only 500 square feet, so I'm going to buy it from Lowe's. 
I had to go all the way to your stomping grounds in Waynesboro to get 500 square feet of it. And I had to settle on a different color. Really? Everything in Lowe's was sold out. Everything in Zion's Crossroads was sold out. And this was two weeks ago. So you went Home Depot, Waynesboro? Uh, Lowe's, Home. Okay. Lowe's, because I yeah. got a contractor card, so I get a discount. But it's all about the discount. So I, I spent more money in gas, <laughs> on the gas. On gas to say. go get that, to get the discount. <laughs> to save the 5%. What's your point? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I do want to go back to the, to the, um, uh, the comment about pro new projects coming up, right? So we had Elizabeth Cromwell on a couple of weeks ago, um, and she is the executive director or CEO, actually, of the Charlottesville Chamber of Commerce. And they're doing this thing called Project Rebound, which is super cool. So there's one particular committee, which somehow or another I got appointed on, which is called um, infrastructure. But what it's really about is having conversations with the local jurisdictions to kind of green tape projects, right? Let's take this opportunity to say, what can we do to green tape? And it's not necessarily construction. It's other processes and 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 use this new technology everybody's becoming super comfortable with to help move that along. So, uh, so I just, to share that with you, that I, I think there's gonna be some really good conversation about that. Now, how do we get from conversation to implementation? Sometimes takes a bit of time on it, but uh, so I just, just be a little hopeful about it, that there is real conversation going on about that. What I, I, I'd be happy to build on that and share how that may have affected our world in new construction. Um, I want to give another shout out to Jody here as part of her report. But, you know, even before the pandemic showed up, um, I commend Jody for reaching out to all the localities within which Blue Ridge Home Builders Association does business. Um, they said, she said, what are we as builders doing right? What are we as builders doing wrong? How can we grow our relationship with you, City of Charlottesville, or you, Albemarle County, Greene County? Um, and so I want to commend her for being proactive about that. But what, what happened was, because she was doing such a good job communicating early on, once the pandemic hit, she already had folks on speed dial or sure. in their email, you know, in the inbox. And so they, she, they've been really collaborative. And so not only working on issues and opportunities that we had before the pandemic, but it, it created a conduit to focus on that during the pandemic and, and pandemic specific issues. Some of our localities have been great um, with technology, um, maybe um, a, a digital record of building inspections while you're on site so that, you know, we're not relying on a yellow piece of paper with a signature on it to know whether we pass an inspection or not. Um, so, so some, yeah, some of your localities already had that in place. Others have had to respond to the pandemic and social distancing and try to catch up. So, even though there's a little bit of growing pains, both for the locality and for the builders, it's all for the good. I think we're all going to be better off because of it in the long run. And Keith, I really love your use of the term green tape. I don't know if you guys have talked about it on the show before, but we all know what red tape is and it gets in the way. Um, the world could use more green so, tape these days. Um, we originally had you slotted for a little a time. We've exceeded that. Can you spend more time with us? I'm nice. Yes, great. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to Jerry. He's got a bunch of questions. Yeah, questions you. coming in here. Um, thoughts on a spring market? Um, people want to know. I mean, is, is the spring market... So we were talking about this earlier. Is the spring market the fall? Is 2020 not going to have a spring? And it's going to have 2021 spring? I mean, what are your thoughts on that topic? Uh, you know, I, I got to go back. And uh, again, I think that your friend Greg Slater is doing a great job of that. I think the realtors are doing a great job of that. Um, you know, Robert Dietz, our um, chief economist for the National Association of Home Builders, um, earlier this year was, was more optimistic than we expected. Um, his revised report is not as optimistic, um, but I don't want to call it bleak. Um, I, I think what's most important is how this pandemic is affecting people's confidence and when it will return. And I, and, and, and I, I don't think you can crystal ball um, are you Are you, does memory serve correct, your second generation builder? So, That's right. My father started our company in the late 70s. Can you offer some perspective, Christopher, on the Charlottesville Central Virginia market versus some of the national trends historically with the company and how you've seen this market compare and contrast nationally? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> we're a relatively small town. 
Um, we we will. I think my observation, especially going into the last recession, was that we 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 drag we follow behind a little bit. Um, DC was crushed before it ever hit us. I had friends calling me and telling me to prepare, and I was a little younger and full of a little bit more confidence. And I laughed at him and said, "You don't know what you're talking about." But you know, certainly a learning experience, a humbling experience. Um, I think we lag behind. Um, I think we might see more robust sales, and as long as things don't fall off significantly, we may not we may affect or as much of a long term effect in the very next breath. You know, we were we we founded our company in Waynesboro, Virginia, just across the mountain, and and it was funny back in the recession how I was able to observe that Waynesboro was even a little bit further behind on Charlottesville. But the same is true of the recovery. The bigger markets recover faster, um, and I think that they might get hit harder and, and it causes a more abrupt rebound and markets that don't get hit as hard are a little bit slower to recover because they don't really know what they're recovering from from because maybe it it didn't hit them as hard it's good analysis we were talking about this you have a relatively strong um stock market it's certainly rebounding um you have folks with potentially depending on who you are um who've saved some money True. Lot. I, I think that new construction market is prime for for some success here. So I, it's going to boom. Well, I think the overall, I think we need to define boom. In, 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 Relatively. In, so, That's what I meant. So Christopher and everybody else, Jerry's got, and I have got a little side bet going on for a bottle of bourbon about what the, what the fourth quarter really is going to look like of this year versus the first quarter of that. And we haven't said... Right, we, we we'll talk about that next. Yeah. We haven't said it. Uh, we're, we're, we're negotiating the uh, high and low. The over-under. The over-under. Throw the bet the... to Christopher and see what he thinks. Of uh, where he was. You don't want to take it to him? Uh, see what he says? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to lose a bottle of bourbon. I think I... Think <laughs> I, I got to know what kind of bourbon it is before I... He can wants agree. to go oh. with Riggleman's bourbon. Riggleman's bourbon. He likes Riggleman's oh. bourbon. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's really good stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah so, you know... I, I, Everybody in our businesses, right, are, are trying to figure this out. Everybody in general, you know, I, I was hoping to speak to the to Sally, to to uh, our representative here about, you know, what is she seeing the governor's phasing plan and how is that really going to impact? And one of the things I think um, we're gonna uh, looks like uh, looks like we're gonna. Um, from what I understand, we're probably going to get a little bit more guidelines today from the governor, right? Uh, and there's probably going to be a little bit more industry specific, right? And that's part of the reason I was asking you how, how your industry is handling this. <clears throat> I think there's going to be certain specific criteria. I'll tell you, uh, as you know, my wife is Austrian, right? And we follow the Austrian news very closely every morning and plus our family members. So they've already opened up the schools. In, in Austria, and they're alternating days, right? So one group of kids go on one day, one group of kids go on the other day. They've opened up the restaurants. Jerry's very smartly talking about uh, this opening, in my opinion, of the downtown mall. What they're doing is in European cities, and I think in Tampa they're doing it also. They're shutting streets down, and they're trying to... to An open-air beer garden to stimulate the economy downtown. I mean, people are afraid of going to restaurants, Christopher. Why not do like a wristband situation, pay two bucks, give it to the city, generate some upfront revenue for the city. We're, we're in a budget deficit here. Get the wristband with the plastic cup, go into a restaurant on the mall, and you can walk around the mall um, with the drink to help drive business downtown because people are afraid to go inside. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I really love the creativity that we've observed out there. You know, we're, we're buying carry out food. We're trying sure. to support our, our local uh, restaurants. And, you know, the, and I, Marie I believe our governor has done a pretty good job um, w with the rules that he's put in place. Uh, you know, the fact that you can walk into your local restaurant and bring a, 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 an adult beverage home with you. I mean, that's just a perfect example of getting creative. Uh, the home building industry remained um, essential. We were able to continue to work. We had to figure out how to do it safely. We put our safety plans in place. So I think all the other businesses that are going to begin going back to work are going to do the same thing that we did. And they're going to get creative and they're going to figure out how to be safe, how to be social distanced, and, and still how to, how, to, how to keep their employees uh, working. So I haven't had an opportunity to talk to car leadership, but you know, if if this thing really opens up in phase one, as the governor has it articulated from our industry, will we be able to actually go into open houses now? If if there's a limit of ten people, and and I think that's what we're going to see maybe today or the next couple of days. I'm seeing the uh, Facebook events 
They now are. for in-person open houses yeah. for a week from this weekend. Yeah. So I, I don't know how they're doing that without guidance from the governor, but, but, but from what I hear from phone calls, I've been kind of the last 24 hours. I think that's what we're going to see today. Is they're going to say, okay, this is how you do this, guys. This is how real estate agents, you know, this is the guidelines to go ahead and do it. And then we're going to have to self-police it, right? Somebody violates yeah. it. You know, I was going to say drop a dime, but I don't know. If, I don't think, I don't think that you can't do that anymore. <laughs> no, no. Drop, a drop a quarter. Does anybody, no, we're not dropping dimes on anybody. Does anybody? Snitches get stitches, Smith. Snitches go, get stitches. Uh, in my neighborhood, you did. That's, <laughs> that's sure. my neighborhood too, homie. There you go. <laughs> we, um, Greg told me yesterday, Greg's my realtor. You guys, uh, everybody knows Greg. Not everybody, um, but don't Slater. say that. Shout out to Greg. Hope you're watching. Um We've got a we've got a house being previewed today. Sure. Um, the realtor's going through with his with his camera, his phone, and he's he's doing a video of the house to help that client preview it and decide whether whether they're willing to take that to the next step and actually go step foot in the so, house. So I'm doing one right after this show. Same thing, right? We're gonna we're gonna do that. This particular person's coming from overseas, so it was gonna happen no matter what that way. Uh, and it's funny because, mm -hmm. as you know, I sit on the Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission and. We had our first Zoom meeting last night, and and it was interesting. Uh, had all elected officials from the six jurisdictions on there, you know, and everybody's like, "Well, hey, can we like just keep on doing this after the governor really?" And from from that perspective, we can't because it's a public body, right? Right? You have to allow people to come in. Now, people can chime in on a Zoom and all that stuff, but you know, that I I really believe. Your industry, my industry, Jerry's industry is forever just changed. Are we ever going to go all the way back the way we used to do it? Probably not. But I think somewhere in the middle. We're going to have to use these tools as an asset. And um, we're, uh, I think we're going to bounce you back to... No, you killed it, man. Anything else you want to say to Charlottesville? Yeah. Me? You're good. Hey, Christopher, uh, you're really good in this setting, by the way. You're very approachable. Hey, I, I, I you guys... Keith knows this. I was reluctant to come on the show at first. Um, maybe a little camera shy. I really enjoyed the last show we did. I really enjoyed doing this. Um, I enjoy sharing with everyone out there. Thanks for tuning in. Um, do I have anything smart to share um, before I get off the phone here? We got um, that book cover on screen right now for the book you recommended. Judah's got it up there. It's a phenomenal book. Where's my, where's cheese? my cheese? Yeah. Where's my cheese? Um, Who moved my cheese, say. he said. Who moved yeah. my Does cheese? it got pictures? Um, be smart. Be safe. Embrace new technology. It's not just going to get us through in the pandemic. It's going to make your business model better later, whether it's building houses or, you know, I got a good friend and neighbor who's a client of mine. I built him a house before he became my dentist. He went back to work this week. He's been sharing pictures of him in his in his office and in, in his in his ninja mask and his in his in his faceplate. Adam Salzberg, keep doing it, man. Um, embrace it. I love it. it. Well, oh, real, real quick, I just, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, they make stuff to make the gray go away in your beard, I'm just saying. Uh, Leave the man alone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, but just to go Fair just enough. to go on that note, uh, you know, our vet opened up on Monday, brought back all their employees. Um, my 15-year-old Beagle was in desperate need of some medical attention. Uh, a couple of other industries you know printing and some of the other folks that we do business with um are brought got all their ppp money brought all their employees back so i think you're going to start seeing that slowly hopefully the governor really gives us some good guidance today so. and we can move on but hey, hey brother i just wanted to say thank you do me a favor listen to this next thing because I, I i'm stumped on this number and maybe you can chime in and offer some perspective on it okay thank okay you. thanks christopher you crushed it, dude. You guys have, you a, have a good day. one. Mike Christopher, great guy right there. Um, guys, give it a like and a share on any of the streams you guys are watching this program on. You're about to see Keith, the distinguished gentleman, and I make potentially a wager of epic proportions. Epic. Um, with a is bottle Yona, of brown juice on the line. Is from, Yona watching? From Denver, Riggleman. Yona is watching. Chris Ooh. Jensen, welcome to the program, Real Estate 3, the fabulous off so I have offspring to make of the late, great Pat Jensen. Oh, yeah. Love Chris Jensen. Uh, you know, they... they um, there's a um, leadership academy at Carr named it. after Pat. Yeah, Pat's great. Cl class lady. Yeah, first rate class lady. Missed the heck out of her. Right. right. So uh, I, I didn't think we were going to do this on, on on live on air, but you know we're, we've got a little bit of a bet. I, yeah. I'm a bit of an optimist. Yeah, right? I know I, you are. I think I'm an optimist realist. 
Okay, whatever that means. <laughs> I know, it's a hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> Does that actually mean anything? I mean, I'm hopeful, but I'm also very realistic. Sure, I'm yeah. a realistic too. But, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I believe that our um, fourth quarter okay. is going to be our spring. Okay. Uh, but, but not the same thing. I think we're going to be... This is where the over-under has this to be. This is the there. wager. All right, so everybody that's watching, um, here's the bet for the bottle of brown juice, uh, bottle of bourbon from Denver Riggleman, from Silverback. The bet is Q4, fourth quarter 2020. The distinguished gentleman thinks Q4 2020 is going to be our spring quarter, our spring market. Yeah, so what we need to do is we need to determine... We've got to define it. We've got to define it and define how much... Um, over and under. Right. right? So um, here's basically it's the It's not going to be exact. Right. I agree. Yeah. So we have to take total sales volume, new construction included or just old, just new construction included? I think new construction will skew the numbers. Let's drop out new construction. You think new construction will skew the numbers? Okay. So. You're amending. <laughs> you're amending. <laughs> you're already making amendments to the wager. All right. I new, just realized how much a bottle of bourbon is going to cost New me, construction so. <laughs> skews the numbers. All right. Smith says Q4 is going to be All our right, boom. We'll leave the con- new construction in. We'll leave the new construction. In. <laughs> okay. So basically, we have to come up with an over-under. We're going to compare and contrast Q4 2020 to Q2 2019. Here's what we're asking you. What should be the over under? 80% capacity? But, 80%? But we need to define the time period. Well, it's the last three months of the year. Is Q4. Well, n- no. So, so the spring market is really March to June. Say March 1st to June 1st. Right? So what we got to look at what... That's three. That's three. Okay, March, three April, May. Okay, okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's three. That's I was this counting. many. This is this many. Okay, it's three, Keith. Thank you. How okay. many is this many? <laughs> um, right. So we're going to look at what the, what the sold was. Yeah. March first or June first, nineteen. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Right, you're writing this down. I, yeah, I don't. I don't want any Smith shenanigans over here. Oh, yeah. March, March one to June one, 2019. Correct. Total sales volume. Correct. Sold. Closed. Are we talking units or dollars? Just dollars. Okay, dollars. We could do both if you want, units and dollars. We'll Total do units, day, days on market, and dollars, volume. Okay, so total dollars, units, and DOM. Versus, because I think in fairness to you, if we do the fourth quarter, uh-huh. it's really not a good, you know, October, November, December, uh-huh. right? So I think it should be September 1 through December 1st. September 1. To December 1. Got it. 2020. 2020. So we're going to compare March 1 to June 1, 2019. Correct. To September 1, to December 1, 2020. And you say September 1 to December 1, 2020 is going to be the spring market this year. I think so. And we're going to take the total dollars. But not not 100%. Right, right, right. We're taking the total dollars, total units, and the average days on the market. Got it. For 2019, got March it. 1 to June 1. Got it. And we're going to compare it to September 1, December 1, 2020. Now we got to come up, the last thing, the threshold. Is it going to operate September 1 to December 1 at 85% capacity? I'm going to take the under on 85. I'll You're take You're taking over. the over. So it's, if it's 85 point something. 85 is a push. Okay. That means no one wins. We'll 85, 85.01 and above, you win. 85 and under, I win. So For now, now, who's going to be doing uh, Is Greg Slater watching? Greg Slater, are you watching this program? Someone tag uh, Greg Slater in the mix over here. So we need a third party to do the math. All right, Slater's, I trust Slater. Yeah, we'll get Greg yeah, to do Slater's it. Slater's good. We'll get Greg to do it. Yeah, he'll he'll, he'll do want it. to have half the bottle, but. I'll, I'll pour some bourbon when I win. There I'll give go. him, I'll give him some go. of my bourbon. There you go. That was a jab. You're not going to... No, no. I just realized I drink gin, so no matter what, I lose. <laughs> so. do, you, do you honestly think... Okay, I, I, you're, I hope you're not just doing this for the sake of television. No, no. Because I We're am going to enforce this. Yeah, you no. honestly think September 1 to December 1, 2020, the Central Virginia market will perform About eight. At, at 85% capacity that it did March 1 to June 1 of 2019? I think so. Wow. I, you know, I hope I'm right. I hope, I hope I'm not I mean, wrong, but for the fun of the fun for of the this, show, for the show, yeah. I think this is a great little bet. So. What do you guys think? I, 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 I mean, <laughs> I, th- I think that's a ballsy bet. Bethany Thacker, uh, Vilwalk 
who works for the Daily Progress and does real estate classifieds, also work in real estate. She thinks um, it's going to be 37% down, and Jerry Miller's got a locked bourbon waiting for him on his bar. Um, that was just put in the feed by, by Beth. Um, who do you think is going to win this bet? Give it a like, give it a share on any of the streams. How you, are you feeling confident? Yeah, I, I, I feel good. I looked at the last two weeks, and yeah, at the I, moment, at the moment, I'm winning. Relay the data. The last two weeks are intriguing. Yeah, I, I know, and that's what I would love Christopher to read on. So, um, so the so what I did is I looked in the last two weeks, contracts written from March 24th on. Right, so March 24th, 2020, uh -huh. last two weeks of closing. So this year, um, and I factored out new construction, only detached, 25-mile radius of Charlottesville. So this is contracts written from the, from the 24th forward and closed in the last two weeks, yesterday back two weeks. And um, so there were, in 2020, 30 units closed, 12 days was median days on market, and the median sales price was 355 the same exact time period with the same contract date, just instead of 2020, it's 2019. So 38 units closed. So there's your 25%, there's your right? So, so far you're winning on that. Days on market were 19. That's shocking. So that's, I'm winning on that yeah, one. Yeah, you're winning on that one. So we got to, what happens if we, have different things. Well, we well, gotta... well, you threw a wrinkle into this by adding three different bets. It was totally total value. But I, this, are we making this three separate bets, or is it if someone gets two out of the three, they win the bet? Let's do two out of three. Okay, like two it. out of three. All right. But the interesting thing, which I have not had, enough, I just did this earlier this morning. So in 2020, the median sales price for that same two weeks contract back was 355. Last year, it was 275. So that's an 80 grand delta, and I just. I'm trying to figure out why. So, um, don't know, haven't done it. I literally did this at 5.30 this morning. Well, you dissected that there were some higher trades than the period. Yeah, so well, obviously that's the reason yeah, why, the, went high. The, that's the, why the, the median went up. So the median drops up your high and your lows and whatever's in the middle. But if you start taking a look in the middle, that's kind of where it is. So, it's weird, you know, there was 85, you know, we hit the 25% negative on the, on the normal, normal sales. We didn't hit it on the DOMs, but there's a huge spike. And, and, and as a guy who sits on a couple of affordable... Hey, you follow it. Well, as a guy who sits on a couple of affordable housing nonprofits, I am hoping this is an... I was hoping to ask Sally, who's an economist, you know, is there some methodology problem here that I'm doing? I'm sure that there is, but I'm really freaking out as somebody who sits on these affordable housing commissions and boards. If it's really tracks like this, the affordability is just really the affordability, in, uh, the affordability index of Charlottesville goes through the roof. Yeah, and that scares the hell it out of me. Scares the hell out of you. That scares me more than what I think the market's going to be. Well, and, and Beth, you may have picked up another listing from this program. Beth uh, Vil Wilcock, who's watching, she says, and Beth, I'm sorry I'm messing up your last name here. She says, in all fairness, guys, I'm not in real estate anymore at the DP, but I'm watching the market because I'm very much considering listing my home right yeah. now. Um, I, well, I know a couple of real estate agents, Beth, yeah, that could help with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, anybody who's watching and is more than qualified to help you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we we just we're about ready to put a couple of listings on, and um, uh, you know, it's like anything else: right location, right price, right features, right conditions. At the moment, there's buyers, uh, but uh, well, I'm going to keep a track of this. But we'll do best. Uh, Two out of three. Michael Guthrie is trying to give me some tips to win this bet because oh, he geez. loves to see me beat Keith Smith over here. He says, go with earlier, Jerry Miller. Last two weeks means closings will be up late June versus May. Closings on your bet won't be impacted until pendings 7-15-2020. Mr. Guthrie, don't I hang my license with you? <laughs> Thank I you. think Michael's saying, Keith, you put me through enough stuff. Let's let Miller get this W. <laughs> 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 and he knows that Miller will, is is good share, and he will give him some of the brown juice. Look, you know, at the I, at the end of the day, this is just a little bit of fun. Yeah, right. That's all it is. And we're, it's a wager and, between two friends. There you go, and and we'll we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Either I mean, I mean, let's cut to the chase here. I hope you're right. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, it's the be. type of bet where like. Even yeah. if I lose, you win. You win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the economy's doing good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I we'll, hope you're right. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I hope you're right. Um, let's give some plugs for the sponsors before we go. Yeah, you know, uh, across the board, everybody that's running across the bottom with 
they're all local. They all have local footprints. Uh, Pearl is a bit national, but they got local footprints, and this is all about supporting local. And uh, so get out there and support local. What do you got planned for the weekend? Uh, I've, I've, we were going to take off, but now I'm showing houses. You're all. grinding, dude. Yeah, we're showing houses Good all Good for weekend. you. Phone's mm -hmm. ringing? Yeah. Um, you know, we're th thank the Lord. Well, knock for Micah. Better half? Yeah, fake Ikea. Fake Ikea. Well, I think Better half family? So I'm going to let you in a little secret. Okay, here we go. Everything is fake at Ikea. <laughs> so That's true. There's no real wood in That's why it's that price. Ikea. Yeah. Uh, Michael says that was for the both of you. I got no favorites in this fight. Sure, sure. He's and got he, no favorites. But he'll take a sip, though. <laughs> I'll give you some, Michael. I want the W, baby. Um, you know, you are a competitive fellow. This is going to be fun. Me or you? Oh, we're both. We're both? Oh, yeah, sure. We're both hyper-competitive. Oh, yeah. Would you not describe yourself that way? Me? No, of course not. <laughs> Would you say you've gotten less competitive the older you've gotten? Oh, definitely. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, because I'm still, my wife says it's my, one of my biggest strengths and my biggest weaknesses. Oh, I, I, yeah. You'll find that out when you get close to the 6-0. When you get above double nickels. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll double see. nickels is the threshold? I don't know. Is that 55? That's 55. Double nickels. <laughs> double nickels. You didn't know what that was? I didn't know. I've never heard that before. Kids. What, what happens if you get above double nickels, Pops? Pops. Pops. Is this show over yet? No, it's still oh, going. And it's going really we well. I, another, I really enjoy it. We got what another. happens if you get above double nickels? If you survived. That's what happens. <laughs> You're aging well. Thank I you. Enjoy you. Thank you. Thank um, you. All right. This is Real Talk, powered by the Yes Team Realtors. I think you should reach out to Beth. Once the show is over, because she's eager to list her house. The well, is, so the, the, the better seven eights will do that. Yona, she's, reach out to Beth. The show is powered by the Yes Team Realtors, trusted partners in the real estate game. I thoroughly, and I'm not just saying this because he's sitting next to me, I thoroughly enjoyed the company of yeah, this I individual. Do, very much so. Um, and the Even though you're young, we have on Friday. But it's okay. <laughs> what did you call me? Kids. Even though you're young. Kids. I get it. You guys have a good Friday. Hey, Take let's care. Talk, let's do another sh quick shout out. For, uh, oh, who do you want to shout yeah, out? Yeah, no, no. So I just want to shout out for next Tuesday, real okay. quick. Um, you know, we, we've got Diane, Donnie Wyatt coming in from Co Construct. We're going to have a national conversation as well as a local conversation. Um, and and then the, uh, the, the representative, uh, Sally Hudson, has agreed to come back. So it's going to be Big a time. Pretty, pretty long show. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of banter on that. It's going to be kind of. Like yeah, I know, but this is going to be all business next Tuesday. 57th. Um, delegate, 57, 57th, mm -hmm. um, uh, Sally Hudson, uh, Virginia House of Delegates on mm -hmm. Tuesday at 1015, along with Donnie Wyatt, mm -hmm. Chief Executive Officer, co-construct a national brand so he's gonna here look, in Charlottesville. Yeah, he, he has over 5,000. That's impressive. Yeah, he has over 5,000 builders in his network throughout the country, so we're going to get a good feed on how those markets are doing and may come this way. And we'll have news um, from the governor's announcement today. Yeah, we'll see. That's uh, going to impact you guys. Well, I think it's going to impact everybody. Everybody, So yeah. I'm on the line with him at, on part of the call-in or feed, whatever you want to call it, at 2 o'clock today. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. You guys have a good weekend. Keep it local. Keep it Please. safe. Keep it local. Local. Support local. Take care, guys. That's good. Yeah. That's the guy, Judah. Good show today, guys. Who do you have on? Uh... No guests today. Really? Yeah. I'm going to try a, a solo show and see what happens. We're going to try.